Hi all, today I'm going to be showing you a problem from the Mathematical Olympia program based on polynomials. And the reason I decided to do so is because it has an extremely elegant solution. So first off, let's read the problem. For n greater than 1, let a1, a2, a3, and so on, a n, be n distinct integers. Prove that the polynomial f of x equals x minus a1 times x minus a2 all the way till x minus a n minus 1 cannot be written as g of x, h of x, where g and h are non-constant polynomials with integer coefficients. Okay, so first off, we have to note that when we put f, f of a1, then we get minus 1. Similarly, when we put f of a2, we're also going to get minus 1. In general, for f of a i, we get minus 1 for i at less than equal to n. Now, the proof can actually start to take off. So we have f of a i is equal to minus 1 for i less than equal to n. And let's suppose that this can be written as g of x times h of x. So we have g of a i times h of a i equals minus 1. And since the question stated that g of x and h of x have integer coefficients, these guys are going to be integers for all values of x. And one of those values is going to be ai, so g of ai and h of ai are also definitely going to be integers. The only integer solution to this equation is if either g of ai equals 1 or minus 1 and h of ai is also equal to 1 or minus 1. So we can write g of ai plus h of ai equals 0 for all i. Now let's define a new polynomial. Let's say g of x plus h of x equals q of x. And the equation q of x equals 0 is only going to be true when we put x as a1, a2, a3 all the way to a n. And so we have that the equation q of x equals 0 n distinct roots. There will be n distinct roots to this equation. So now, basically the proof is pretty much complete. All you have to realize now is that if I have g of x times h of x equals f of x for all x, and we know that neither g of x nor h of x are a constant polynomial, then we have that the degree of f of x equals the degree of g of x times h of x. And so we have that at most the degree of either g of x or h of x is less is equal to n minus 1. So I'm going to write that down. Degree g of x is less than n minus 1, less than equal to n minus 1, and the degree of h of x is less than equal to n minus 1. And let's go back to the other polynomial we defined, q of x. So q of x was g of x plus h of x. And if the degree of g of x and h of x is always going to be less than or equal to n minus 1, let's consider if it's equal to n minus 1. So we have degree of g of x equals n minus 1. This means that there's going to be some term among, among this sum which has which is being raised to the power n minus 1. So basically we're going to have ax raised to n minus 1 plus bx raised to n minus 2 plus cx raised to n minus 3 and so on. But what's important to note here is that we said that q of x, I'm going to write this down, q of x equals 0 as n distinct roots. And the equation we've written down can have at most n minus 1 roots because the, the, highest, the highest term, the leading term of the polynomial is of degree n minus 1. So it, took, it, can only be, it can only have n minus 1 factors and therefore at most it has n minus 1 roots. And this is a contradiction. Therefore, f of x cannot be equal to g of x, h of x, and thus 
the proof is complete. Have a nice day.